Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program, fuckers. And today we're coming to you from the Archie Luxury Craig Teal Jones studio. And uh, you, you don't mind if I, if I have a little drink, do you? And uh, I'd, I'd, today I'd like to, uh, I'm doing a, uh, a, watch, a watch review. And it's a watch that my good friend Craig Teal Jones purchased and uh, it's it's a watch which uh, he asked me to talk about and uh, I'm not I'm not going to be changing my opinion just because Craig is a dear friend and uh, it's a it's the Amiga it's a vintage Amiga Seamaster 300 and uh, Craig sent to me I've actually become very fond of it and it makes a change from my Submariner I think the fub Submariner has become so popular that, that it's seen as a generic sports watch now and not much of a diving watch, which is what it was really designed for. The Seamaster 300 doesn't suffer this problem. As it's plainly obvious, it was intended for diving and definitely can't be worn with a suit uh, due to its size. I'd love to know your thoughts on the watch and whether it is something that you would be happy to wear down at the beach. It is a worthy alternative to, to us. Is it a worthy alternative to a Submariner? Also, thanks for the advice you gave me on NATO straps, as I think the plain black one I have bought really suits this piece. And uh, it's, it's a really interesting article. It's a really interesting watch. And... Uh, What's my view? The, these are the the Omega Seamaster 300s, and I, I, I've got to tell you, in all honesty. At Dunhill, our philosophy is simple. Every item that bears the name Dunhill must be useful. It must work dependably. It must last. It must be beautiful. It must be the best of its kind. I think these are fucking better than a Submariner. I have owned two. I bought two very cheap and I very, very foolishly sold them off because I, I didn't appreciate what they were, you know, and uh, I mean, I, I was an idiot, you know, I didn't appreciate, I didn't pay a lot of money for them, and uh, they are a very, very valuable piece now. I, I, to be honest with you, if I hadn't had been such a fucking moron, and uh, here, here, to Craig Teal Jones, if I hadn't have been such a fool and sold mine so cheap, I'd embrace embrace that piece now and uh, what do I think of it I think it's iconic I love it I absolutely love it it's probably my favorite Seamaster it's iconic the only warning you got to, I've got to say is you've got to be a bit careful there are a few fake Omega 300s around Omega Seamaster 300s around And what some rather unscrupulous fuckers have done is they've taken that movement, I think it's a 562 movement, out of another Amiga and they've put it into a reproduced case. So you, you, you really do have to have your guard about yourself. But the, the Omega Seamaster 300, it's probably one of the all-time classics. If I was a classic collector, I'd have a Pro Prof, I'd have a Amiga Seamaster 300, I'd have a 15, 55, 13, no date sub plastic, and a 1680 uh, plastic sub. I'd have those pieces. But the memory's painful for me because I sold them cheap. I was stupid. And uh, what do I think of it? I think they're iconic. 
they're 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 like they're not like a modern Seamaster, which is very, very passe. These are a true classic, and uh, they're they're only going to rise in value. I think they're a sexy watch, and uh, I'd gladly wear one any day of the week. And um, I'll let you in on a secret, audience. I am actually, I am actually, I am actually getting another Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon. That's right, fuckers. Archie is going back to Omega. And I really see Omega being, it's very similar to Rolex in many ways, but it's better. These are fucking strong words. I'm a huge lover of the Omega line. And, you know, for years I understood. You, you, it was a watch. It was the poor man's Rolex. You bought the Omega. But I really think myself, the Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon, it's a fucking classic. The Seamaster 300, an amazing piece. The Pro Prof, another amazing piece. And I really, I think Omega is worthy in my box of watches with the Breguet, the Jager LeCoultre, and the Patex. And I'll tell you something. I'm very, very proud to have put an order in for an Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon. I will reveal all very shortly, fuckers. And after I've got the Omega, the next piece I really want is is a Rolex Datejust, fuckers. A Datejust. I really want a nice Datejust. Now, I haven't decided whether I should get a Datejust for my birth year, 1972, or do I get a 16234 Sapphire Crystal, you know, a nice wearable piece like that. I haven't decided which way to go. I'll certainly keep the audience updated, and uh, I'm really looking forward to coming back into the fold. This year, 2014, I want to be bring in more usable watches. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you fuckers think of that, and please tell me what you think of Craig Teal Jones' vintage Omega Seamaster 300. See you later, fuckers!